What is up guys? Welcome to my breakdown slash review for The Flash Season 6 Episode 15 titled Exorcism of Nash Wells, which as the title suggests deals with Nash's him being haunted by the other Wellses, specifically Eobard Thawne. Now uh, the, in this episode there were a couple things to talk about for the breakdown and obviously for the review, so let's get right into it. Now right off the bat there is the introduction of this new speedster watch called the Speed Gauge created by and named by Cisco that tells Barry how much speed he's using so that he can stop using so much so that he doesn't lose his power so quickly. Now this isn't really a reference, the Speed Gauge doesn't exist in the comics, however I think there maybe could have been a reference here that would have been really 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 interesting but I, I think it was a huge missed opportunity. Now the colors they're using here are uh, red, green, and yellow in some other order but in the comics, there's actually a way to tell how speeds, how fast speedsters are going, how fast they can go, based off the color of their lightning, with red being the slowest, then yellow, then I think it was purple, blue, and then white is the fastest. They could have done something like that. They could have done, like, in the colors here, the more speed is using, the more it goes from red to white, and, it, like, uh, somewhere in that spectrum. That would have been, in my opinion, really, really cool. Instead, it's just, like, three colors, like the, the traffic light colors, and that's it, which I think is a huge missed opportunity for uh, that huge reference to how it I, I wasn't ever confirmed in the comics, but one of the writers for the Flash comic book said that this is kind of a way to tell how fast a speedster can go based off the color of the lightning. That, I think, could have been a really cool reference that they did miss out on. Now, near the beginning of the episode, like basically the first scene of the Harrison Wells, Nash Wells storyline, we get a scene where Eobarthon is pretending to be Nash in order to escape, and in this scene, he mentions a couple Harrison Wells's that Nash Wells saw, he never mentions them by name, but he mentions details about them, and based off that, I think we can assume which ones he, he is talking about. He mentions a wizard Harrison Wells, which would be Wells the Grey from Earth-13, a French Harrison Wells, which could be H.P. Wells from Earth-25, or the French mime version of Harrison Wells that we saw during Season 3 when Team Flash was trying to find a replacement for Harry Wells and they ended up finding HR. As both of them are French, that's literally the only thing that, made that Eobar mentions about this version of Harrison Wells, so it really can be either. And finally is the New York version of Harrison Wells, which could be the Earth-24 version of Her uh, Sonny Wells, who also was a member of the Council of Wells slash Harrisons, which all of the characters, assuming that the French one is H.P. Wells, were as well, which a couple of which is just a couple of references to previous versions of Harrison Wells. During that same scene, Eobard also mentions that, uh, I guess maybe Nash Wells, he did something where he used this device that uh, Cisco was using to uh, get Eobard, or trying to use it to get Eobard out of his mind, that he used against a psychic starfish on Earth-26. This is not only a reference, obviously, to Starro, who in the comics is the original, the first Justice League villain, who was previously also mentioned or referenced during The Flash. Kid Flash uh, fought him once or twice, but also this is another reference to uh, Earth-26 which has appeared or at least been mentioned before in the Arrowverse, but we haven't really gotten any details about that universe whatsoever. And it's interesting that the first detail we get about the universe, it has to do with this psychic, probably very intelligent animal, as Earth-26 in the comics is home to the animal version of the Justice League, which I think is a very interesting reference and maybe even confirming that that's what is on this version of Earth-26 as well. In this episode, we learn that Nash is maybe from Earth 719. We know that at least Allegra's counterpart, Maya, is from Earth 719, but I think it is possible, maybe likely, that this episode did, did also confirm that that is where Nash Wells is from, because somehow, some way, we have yet to actually officially learn where he's from, what his universe is, which may be significant, it may not be. I mean, it's possible that's just Earth 719, which by, which, by the way, is not a known universe in the comics, but I think that it's it's interesting that if after all this time, after almost an entire season, we still don't officially know what his universe is. So, also in this episode, Iris is talking to uh, Barry, and she mentions that uh, like metahumans have limits, that whole thing in this episode, which is something that I thought was a little bit cheesy, but anyway, she mentions things like uh, Cicada without his dagger isn't really much of anything, and Thawne without his speed, I guess, but he al she also mentions Ringmaster without his rings is really just a regular person, which is weird, because while Ringmaster is a villain in the comics, and a Flash villain at that, or at least he was until recently, he became more of a Wonder Twins villain, 
he's never appeared in the Arrowverse, so it's weird for Iris, by the way, this is the mirror version of Iris, to mention this villain that we've never seen before, and I don't know, maybe it's like off screen that the Flash has fought him or something. Or maybe it's a post-crisis change so that on Earth Prime, The Flash did have a villain that he's fought before, Ringmaster, which is something that we've never seen before, but it did happen, and it's, it just happened on this version of the universe. That's possible, but I feel like the, the Barry would react to that because he has the memory of the pre-crisis version of Barry, and he has never fought Ringmaster before, so it's interesting that they bring up this villain we've never seen before as if they fought him before, even though, obviously, they haven't, at least on screen. During the Nash Wells flashbacks, if you could even call them flashbacks, I mean, it's more like uh, he goes into that memory, he actually sees it again, so it's not really 100% a flashback. But anyway, the scene where uh, Allegra's counterpart Maya dies takes place on Earth-13, which is not only a, a universe that we've not we've never been there before, but it's a universe that we know a character from there. That character was actually referenced in this episode being Wells the Grey, who well, at least in the pre-crisis version of Earth-13, or at least in the pre-crisis version of the multiverse was from Earth-13. Earth 13, which considering he was referenced earlier in this episode, I do think that it is possible that he's probably still from there at this point, or at least was, before, you know, the universes were all destroyed. One thing that I thought was interesting in this episode is how they deal with Harrison Wells. Like I said previously, it didn't make any sense that he looked like Harrison Wells during Crisis on Earth X or Season 5. However, it made sense in this episode because he possessed Nash's body, but also it seems like he's probably, maybe, never going to be played by Tom Cavanaugh again because his like essence went out into the universe, maybe in the negative speed force, and he's going to be looking for another vessel, meaning that while he probably will never be played by either Tom Cavanaugh or Matt Letcher ever again, he may be returning if he ever does return played by a completely different actor unless he returns and he does successfully end up uh, possessing Nash's body in the end which honestly I do think is relatively it, it's a possibility for what can happen but I think that at least they're trying to make it make, make sense this is something that they could have done for Christ on Earth X or season 5 as like I said in those seasons it just it boggles my mind it makes no sense that he looks the way he does so there's one more reference to go over, and that's from the Eva storyline, as in this episode, a couple things that she mentions is that she's going to, uh, her, she's trying to be liberated, she mentions the word liberation, and she says success is assured, Now this wouldn't mean anything, however, the episode titles of episode 17 and episode 19 are liberation and success is assured respectively, which obviously means that those episodes, uh, with one episode in the middle being to, called uh, Pay the Piper, which have to do with Pied Piper, those episodes will probably have to do with Mirror Mistress, or whatever her name's going to end up being, as those titles refer to what she's been saying, or at least what she says in this episode. So for the review, I thought this episode was not great, I thought it was good, maybe like decent, but definitely not a great episode, which again, like the last episode, is disappointing. Again, like the last episode, the main reason this is not very good, or it's not great, I mean, it is good, it's just, it's not great, it has to do with the villain who in this episode is Sunshine, the last episode was the Turtle 2, and I kid you not, I think these two villains are indistinguishable from one another, aside from obviously their powers and their overall design and costumes their personalities and the way they act it's literally the exact same character and it, it does not make for a good villain whatsoever it's kind of crazy how similar they were it's like they, I'm watching the same episode yet again the worst part of the last episode the turtle and the worst part of this episode sunshine I think they bring down the episode not like a crazy amount it's still a good episode but they bring down the episode quite a bit like I said earlier, I thought that the metahumans have limits thing that was kind of cringy, it was kind of cheesy, didn't love that aspect of this episode. I do really, I do kind of like uh, Barry's whole storyline here where he's losing his powers, but at the same time, I don't really know if that could go anywhere other than he loses his powers for a while and he's not the Flash, and then he gets his powers back as they make this new speed for us. Honestly, that's really all there is to it, which honestly, it's not really all that interesting because all that means is that we'll be seeing him as the 
Flash a lot less, which is kind of, it's not really all that exciting. However, I think other than those two things, the, the whole Barry losing his powers thing, not really a huge fan of that. And then Sunshine, I definitely thought this was a good episode. Everything else was a good episode. The Eva storyline was actually pretty interesting as it's, it, they now brought in a second mirror dimension copy. And like I said in my review for the last episode, I think what was something that would be really, really interesting is if they really, they replace everybody on the cast except for Barry. That could be something that is pretty cool where it ends up so that they're all mirror copies. I don't think that will happen because Joe is already suspecting these two and I don't think that that will last until like all of them are, are completely gone. But I do think that it is something that would be really cool. Seeing Sing again was really, really cool, and his storyline with Joe was interesting enough. Definitely not an amazing storyline, especially because of the villain, but it definitely also was pretty good. And it wasn't a, a storyline that brought down the episode whatsoever. However, definitely, I think that the uh, the highlight of the episode was the title, the what the title is referring to, the exorcism of Nash Wells, and that whole storyline. I think it did a great job at developing, at developing Nash past what he's been developed before with his backstory, his connection to Allegra's doppelganger and the, I don't know, adding more layers to the character. I definitely think it did that very, very well. Plus, the villain of the episode was Thawne. I don't think he was, like, at his best or anything, but, I mean, having Thawne as a villain is almost never a bad thing and usually is a very, very good thing. I don't think this episode is any exception. So, overall, while, uh, while I didn't like a lot of things from this episode and it wasn't anywhere near the best episode of the season and not really a great episode overall, it was pretty pretty good nonetheless, and I think I'd give it like an 8.3 out of 10, but let me know what your thoughts about the, about the episode are in the comments down below, and if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.